I wanted to put together something short this week as I've spent much of my time on a few other projects. The Atheist Edge project is one. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It's a series of videos on the book 666 Things Your Religious Leaders Never Taught You. It's a multi-video project with over 30 contributors. I've been working on preparing for the Ultimate Debate Challenge on the Atheist Roundtables channel as well. And I started a few projects and then scrapped them as they just weren't coming together. And then I came up with this idea, Granny's Challenge. Let's have a chat. Hello and welcome. I wanted to put together a few thoughts that I've had on the gender movement. As a boomer and having lived through the sexual revolution of the 60s and 70s, I see the gender movement of the current age as being very similar to the sexual revolution then. Both push the boundaries of what is acceptable in self-expression. The sexual revolution made talking about sex and sexual identity acceptable. The sexual revolution got people to talking about sex instead of just thinking about it. Similarly, the gender movement has people talking about and exploring gender identity in ways that were always there, but were never at the forefront of thought and culture. And just like with the gender movement today, there was pushback from the conservatives and evangelicals on the sexual revolution. The sexual revolution paved the way for gay marriage. And while there are still some that will never accept that gay people are just people who have different preferences, so too there are some who will never accept that people can have different gender identities than the ones that they understood when they were five. I don't know why conservatives think it's a good argument to say that if you ask any young child that they will tell you that there are only two genders. First, it's not true. Most young children don't know the meaning of the word gender, as illustrated by when I asked a friend to ask her six-year-old son. His non-responsive answer was a clear indication that he didn't understand the question. Second, try asking a six-year-old what stars are made of. You will get all kinds of answers. The only honest one is, I don't know. If most children answer light, Stars are not suddenly made of light. There is much of the world that children don't understand or only have an incomplete picture of. Ask any child isn't the way to find out the truth about anything, except about how children think. Then you do have to ask a child. When I looked into the history of the sexual revolution, some historians say that it began with the end of the Victorian era and the hippie movement was just the culmination of the revolution. Feminism was in full swing and was a big part of it. Women were suddenly the masters of their own bodies as birth control and abortion became options for them, allowing them to express themselves sexually without the repercussions of shaming and an unwanted pregnancy. In the 80s, we asked what happened to the hippies of the 60s? And some reporters were saying that they grew up and were now part of the very culture that they had fought so hard against. This isn't really true. The sexual revolution changed how we see sex, and the culture changed to accept those ideas. When the hippies started to blend in with the culture, it wasn't because they abandoned their ideas. It was because the culture came to embrace them. They no longer were counterculture, because they now were the culture. I think this will happen with the gender identity movement as well, but I personally think it will take longer. It will take longer because gender identity isn't something that affects everyone on a day-to-day -day basis the way sex does. People who have no gender identity issues generally don't listen to what is going on within the movement. This is part of the reason that we need to make giving our pronouns as natural as giving our names when we are introduced. If everyone starts giving their pronouns every time they meet someone new, gender identity will become something that affects everyone on a regular basis. 
It's a way that everyone can get in on the gender identity movement, regardless of how they identify. I'm going to do this myself, but old habits are hard to break and new habits are hard to form, especially when you are old. So here is the granny challenge. Try to catch me not giving my pronouns when I meet someone. Watch my live streams from here on out. Watch my Twitter and Facebook pages if you like too, but there it will be harder to tell if I'm meeting someone new. If I fail to give my pronouns, call me out. I will donate $5 to PFLAG for every legitimate instance of where I fail to give my pronouns. Now, if 20 people call me out on one instance, it still only counts as one. That still only counts as one! Now, for my super challenge. You do the same. Your penalty for forgetting doesn't have to be monetary. It could be that you write 50 times, I will remember to give my pronouns. It could be that you have to post on social media, I will remember my pronouns. It could be anything. Get creative. Let me know in the comments what you come up with. To anyone seeing me for the first time, I will start. I'm Godless Granny, she, her. Live your life.